Hello, this is John Miller, the creator of The Rest of Everest. I think I can safely say that this show is, without a doubt, the most in-depth look into the entire experience of what it takes to climb Everest, as well as some other peaks throughout the Himalayas. But all of the events in the series are shown in chronological order. So if you're new to the show, please go all the way back to episode 000 and watch everything in order. That's truly the best way to enjoy it. Thanks. This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 169, Building Bridges. Hey! Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest. I'm John Miller. So this week, we are going to continue kind of poking around that beautiful campsite that uh, we ended with last week. And we're going to get to show more of uh, the, the hidden dangers. <laughs> that you can experience on these treks uh like we were alluding to last week uh the water was probably the biggest danger that we came across so uh we're gonna take a look at that and uh joining me this week is the uh, same group from last week we've got roger jill tilo monica and christine how are all of you doing today good pretty good thanks john, good. john. great <laughs> how are you <laughs> i'm doing great so let's uh let's head back up to that campsite and let's rejoin the expedition here where I have some bad news I'm gonna to have to deliver to the group. So here we go. Okay, so I know I've told all of you that <clears throat> sometimes things are a little bit fluid in in Tibet and Nepal. Okay. So as it turns out, I'm I'm sorry to say this, we don't have another rest day. We used it. Uh, unless all of you want to miss your flights home, um, there's not another rest day. So, um, the there were two itineraries, and there um, one was from Mountain Tribes, one was from the travel agency that we use in um, in Lhasa, and they were different. One had an extra day, so um, we discovered that, and I had a meeting with the staff, and. Uh, Tomorrow is going to be not long in distance, but it will be very steep, and there will be some rocks falling here and there. Um, everyone should be fine, but it's just something to keep in mind. But if you saw that scree field that uh, we could see from, it's kind of over there. <laughs> uh, you can see from the you know the top of the ridge over there. We're basically going to be climbing up that, switch backing up to about two thirds up to the top and then going through it. So right now base camp is two days away. And then um, we will actually be backtracking back through this area. We won't be spending the night here, but our way out is this way. Or that way, wherever we came, wherever we came <laughs> down, we'll go back up and we'll go across. <laughs> There's a trail that you could keep taking, but instead we descended. So I know that uh, some people are like cool no problem it's totally totally fine but I know that some people uh, are having some uh, kind of exhaustion problems and so everyone here has a choice at this point um, and the staff will make it happen if any of you want to stay here for the next, you know, few days until we come back and have like a a mini vacation, um, they'll make it happen and they'll staff it. Okay. <coughs> so this is a really nice camp spot, and um, during the day, I'm sure it's really warm and nice and beautiful here. Um, but uh, it's just an option. Just I wanted to give everyone an option because it's just nice to have options. So. We discussed it, and, and basically, I talked with uh, Shimi and Lob Song, and then I talked with the rest of the guys in the in the cook tent, and uh, I think it was uh, Pemba who summed it up best. He said, "You know, if it needs to happen, we'll make it happen, no problem." And you know, these guys, they'll make it happen, no problem. So, um, but we have, we we are at a very low altitude right now compared to base camp. I mean, we've got, in terms of feet, we have like 3,500 feet to go in two days. And so it's, it's, it's a haul. 
from here. <laughs> Especially with our rest day built in to prepare us for the way back. And that's not even our high point. Our high point's over after we after we hit base camp we have to go over uh <coughs> Z Langmala? Is Langmala, that some? Uh, five thousand <coughs> five five thousand four hundred. Yeah. So base camp's five thousand two hundred. So um that is gonna be a struggle for all of us. Um and so I just wanted, you know, if anyone, oh, that looks really good. <laughs> if any, if anyone's having any any problems now, then I just want to give you an option. I, 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 it's one of those things where you could start tomorrow and and decide, I'm too tired, I can't do it, and you could come back, and um, but uh, it'd be easier to make that decision tonight. Let me know tomorrow morning, and then. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll 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 make plans for it, but we have enough staff, we have enough food to split it up, and we have enough tents to split up. So, um, it's just <coughs> something to think about. Okay? Does anyone have any questions? All right, I'm gonna have some mango. I didn't say it at the time, but I. I uh, halfway through that conversation I had made my decision that yeah. I was going to stay back yeah. and you weren't the only one so Roger, this, this what were you going to do? <coughs> here's the plan leave right. it open, leave it open, we need the light Thank right you. now we're at Camp Mango <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow night we're going to stay at Camp T uh, Sugar Bowl that was, that was so hike, cool right? The, up, the climb is rigorous. Yeah, it's sort of like right here. Yeah. <laughs> From, then the next day, we climb further up to Camp <laughs> Teacup, where we spend the night. The next morning, we might have to get up early. We're going to go to Photo Op Base Camp, <laughs> Cannon in this case, take our photos, scramble back to Teacup, spend the night. The next morning, we'll go down skip sugar bowl, skip mango, Bypass. go up that hill right out there <laughs> to our next camp and anyone uh, who wants to name it, please go ahead. Hey, you forgot to bury the dead. <laughs> the dead will be buried at Camp Teacup. <laughs> and you got, everybody got that? <laughs> and you all having a good time now. Any questions? <laughs> all right. Have a good night's sleep. <laughs> I was pretty convinced that if I had tried that, I would be the dead you'd be burying. <laughs> well, another beautiful plan that did not turn out the yeah, way I was, we I was going to say, yeah, still things ch worked out differently than, than that. <laughs> we'll see more about that in um, future episodes of Season 5 here. So here's that big river that... Uh, it was just was further past our our, our tents, Bad not too idea. not too far, but this was the only way to cross. It was uh, remnants of a bridge. <laughs> yeah. Oops. And just to show that it is flowing fairly heavily. And there is the bridge. Yeah, there's the bridge right there. And thank God, if it had to get washed out, the pieces of it were still there. We have the a little, Tibetan long jump team. Little Cirque du Soleil action here. They are amazing. They are my heroes. Watch this next guy. This next guy's awesome. He sets here the he record. Goes. Yeah. Wow. Not even a splash. Wow. <laughs> was, who was that? I can't tell. Was uh, that, that one, was of from the the, one of the Yak Men? Yeah. Yeah. They were so cool about it. They, you know, this is after breakfast. I, I mean, during breakfast, I went in and. I was teasing Perba, and I said, has anybody seen the bridge? <laughs> Have you seen the bridge? When did they find out that the bridge had washed? Well, it, it was obvious when we got there. It's only, you know, 30 meters from our tents. <laughs> say hi. <laughs> yeah, you can see our tents right there over his shoulder. <laughs> Nah, nah, nah. 
Making the best of a, what could be a bad situation. But you know, I can't kind of wonder if this was being built for the entire group, the yaks and everything, or was it just being rebuilt for us? Right, because they probably could have walked through the water. Yeah, we didn't we didn't see them leave camp, so but I assume they just walked through the water. Did the yaks? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys yeah, you guys left before the yaks. Yes. Well, they were there. the yaks were grazing on both sides of yeah. that river. Yes. I don't think they needed a bridge. I don't think they'd like a bridge at all. Yeah. It's harder for there, them. There's a word for that, but I have no idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just stunned watching this. I mean, these guys can just do anything. It's like, need a bridge? Sure, we'll build a bridge. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I think it's a little mind-boggling that, you know, you think about everything that has to get up to base camp and how infrequently the east face is, is used and that somebody had to truck these timbers in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of the old army commercials, you know, we do more before... <laughs> 9 a.m. that most know? people do all yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, the Sherpa and the guides probably do more than the army. <laughs> with less. With le with a lot less. Definitely. De Maybe it's, Navy. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's definitely uh, what other skills that they need to have for, for trekking. Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter what their official job is, you know. They could be the head, the Sirdar, or a yak man, and, you know, they'll build a bridge, no problem. Work ethic is just so great. <laughs> Yeah. Pen must be fun again. <laughs> and they smile and they sing while they do it. Yeah. <laughs> and dance. <laughs> yeah, they're horsing around a bit. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. <laughs> And we have someone. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> and they don't just slap together either. They they're making it super uh, safe. They're wiring it together. Yeah. And putting rocks all over it to make sure it's safe and that it's going to last. No, how awesome is that? Wow. tools yeah. <laughs> wow good bridge builders yeah good job. she won It was also nice that uh, Chris and Tilo were both filming this, so I got two camera angles. This is Tilo here. 
great footage. Mm -hmm. Tilo, how'd you get on the other side? Uh, walking. So this was in the morning, because I, I have this, I have it wrong, I, in, in my head I had it as evening, so I... I, I really can't remember. I just remember I, I teasing think it was Turbo in the now. evening. Yeah. It's a small step for Roger, it's a huge step for Everstrack 2010, right? That's right. Okay, <laughs> go over the bridge. <laughs> Careful! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well done! <laughs> Could have been a little straighter, guys. Could have done it faster. <laughs> ah, quick you, you forgot a piece over there. <laughs> So this is um, in the morning, uh, the next morning. Yeah, the bridge must have been in the evening because it was yeah, cloudy. It was um, cloudy. And, this um, is Camp Sugar Bowl. Yeah, this is... No, this, <laughs> no, this is Camp Mango. So this is the next morning um, after the group had left. Now, we ended up having um, several of us, myself included, stayed behind and did not make the trek to base camp. Um, I kind of made made a decision that night that if more than one person decided to stay, that I would stay with them. Um, and so we had, um, it was Christine, Aaron, and I ended up staying along with Sonam uh, to look after us. And <clears throat> so since I was not making the climb up to base camp, I decided that I'd actually film what these guys do every morning um packing up packing up all the gear cleaning up from uh, the last night's camp and it's it's a there's a lot more to it than i i had imagined and it, it's kind of overwhelming the amount of stuff that gets taken up with us to support these tracks And last episode, um, you had asked me why this was my favorite campsite. And part of the reason why was um, we I got to spend so much time there um, exploring around it. Um, but the, the night that we spent there... Um, Sonam had made us momos, and they were oh, the, the first, best. So, so this, this, the evening of this day here that we're watching. The evening of this day, we had a campfire. Sonam um, made us the the best momos I've ever had. Um, the the sauce that he made with it at the end of the meal, Aaron actually wound up drinking the extra sauce <laughs> from from the momos, and we just spent the evening, the four of us, talking, sitting around a campfire. Um, I was knitting on my sock project that I had toted with me the whole the whole way. Um, so I got a lot of knitting done at this particular camp, but it it just it was the first time that I felt great 
and felt um, like I didn't have to keep up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you had your own personal toilet. <laughs> Yeah, but the, it was funny. The the it it, it was three sides, and the open side was pointing directly towards the trail that you guys would have come be coming back down. And I could just imagine myself having to be sitting there, get squatting there as you guys come back down the trail. <laughs> Tilo has video. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what what I remember, um, just look at all this stuff. <laughs> um, it's amazing. But uh, Sonam had asked us that first night, "What do you guys want for dinner?" And so we had like a little group consult. <laughs> we had a huddle, <laughs> and then we came back to him. We said, "We want momos and pancakes." <laughs> Oh, I want pancakes. <laughs> so, so he he looked at us, thought for a second, said, "Okay," and he disappeared into the the little cook tent that uh, they had built for him. Since they took the the main cook tent, obviously up up with the rest of the group, and so we had yeah, we had momos and pancakes for dinner that night, and just a, a really nice campfire, which was my wow. first experience uh, being able to sit around a campfire in Tibet. Campfires are, are just great. So that's Sonam right in the middle there. And I don't know that we would have been able to to have a campfire in most of our other encampments because um, the the hill that we that we trekked down into this little valley. Yeah, that's it behind um, us there. Behind. Us. There were all these azalea bushes. Um, and a little bit of timber, and there, there was just enough for us to keep, um, for the yakmen to keep their fire going. Um, they had left us a little firewood, and Sonam kept that going. And, you know, it was just, I was peaceful for the first time in a long time. Mm-hmm. And we just had a great conversation. And we got to nap. Napping is key. Napping is is such a good thing. <laughs> Napping is totally underrated in this world, and and I was just love and light for the few days that we were there, and I I was a little bit worried, um, you know, about everybody who went up because. I, Part of the reason why I didn't go is is I was generally the slowest, and you know when when you're in a situation like this, you can't you cannot take the Himalayas for granted. You can't take altitude for, for granted. I had already been sick once, and and I knew how much trouble I had walking over scree that we had passed through, and I didn't I didn't want to have a repeat of my really awful night because I, I think at this point it really it would have been a lot harder on everybody if if I went down again and I wasn't going to do that to the group and to the staff if if it was would be easier for for me to stay back one of, one of the things I want to point out here is you see them actually cleaning up the trash. And pretty much every every particle of trash was accounted for and uh, put in uh, trash bags and packed out with us. Um, they, they were really conscientious about cleaning up. And that was really cool to see. So especially, um, someone had made a comment about, oh, several episodes ago, I think when we actually first started hiking on the track, Shaq was handing out candies to those kids we saw at that little village. And the kids were just opening the candy and just letting the wrappers blow away in the wind. And 
um, whomever was commenting on that episode was saying that we shouldn't have shouldn't have done that because it was littering. You know, they were the kids were were littering. Had they not had those candies, they wouldn't have littered. And just the whole concept of littering is different out 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 in this part of the world. And I I I don't know if it's because they don't they just don't read um. They don't think about it as as being a problem, or because maybe they don't have enough stuff to uh, <laughs> have, you know, trash. Um, but when you when you're finding a, an expedition company or trekking company to go with, I, I, I do recommend asking how they handle their trash, because not every company does a really good job. Again, the the culture out there is littering isn't an issue. Um, you just you can just throw stuff wherever you want. And it's really, I think it's really important to find a company that values uh, not littering and support them. And mountain tribes are really, really good about uh, cleanliness of, you know, leaving the area in pretty much the same condition that you found it in. It makes a big difference. I'm sure, you know, on the, on the, more populated sides, north and south, you you get a whole different scale of the amount of trash. And um, I know that that there are actually um, I forget where I saw this, but there are expeditions that are actually going up mm -hmm. um, both faces to do nothing but collect trash well, because there are so much at at the various camps. And that's changed over the years where now the permit fees that you pay to climb Everest include trash removal and you get you get uh, I believe you get numbered bags you get a certain number of bags and every bag has to be accounted for filled with trash and and there are huge fines now if you, if you litter but still it's just you know I, I, I think we take it for granted at least here in the U.S., um, you really don't see a lot of littering. You just really don't, and and I know that's because of you know lots of laws have been passed. But in the rest of the world, it's sort of free for all, and and litter litter can be a real problem. I love this guy tying the yak to a bush. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> this is also the morning that I saw one of the yak men dealing with. Actually, I think it was just on camera. He he, one of them was being really ornery, and he grabbed it by the nose ring and actually slapped it across the face <laughs> to get it to do what he wanted. And and that's it's not it's not animal cruelty. I don't want anybody to think that, but they just he just needed this animal to to stop being ornery. I mean, these men, you know, these these animals are what keep these people alive so mm -hmm. you know they they're a very valuable resource so they they're not cruel to their animals but i just thought it just you know that man had cojones to slap <laughs> a, a, a yak across the face I think I needed someone to slap me across the face a few times on this trip. I think we all did. <laughs> you, 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 you felt I needed someone to slap me across no, the face? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all just humans. Hey, you were my rock, John. <laughs> I know better than to hit rocks. <laughs> Hitting rocks hurts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you can testify to that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Monica, let's talk about your stream incident. Um, how we were talking in the last episode about jumping across the stream and everything. Was that, um, was the, the incident I'm talking about, was that, uh, bef before or after you? you went to base camp it was before it was actually 
this morning, the morning of this day, um, right after breakfast or, or a few minutes in between, well, I had to go to the tent and I was just tired of stepping on rocks. I just jumped over that creek. I did that several times and it was never a problem. But this morning I was kind of not myself, missed the sec uh, missed um, the other side a little bit. And then I had to yeah, roll over the ground to, to not f f fall into the water. And while rolling, I heard it crack Ooh. somewhere in my, yeah, one of my ribs cracked. Wow. Um, hmm. It felt a little bit strange. I took some ibuprofen and <laughs> tried to get on. And during the day, it became worse and I had to, to take some of my steroids to, to walk further. Mm -hmm. But I kind of got used to it because if you crack your rib there is nothing you can do about that it's just yeah it has to heal <laughs> yeah e even back home there's nothing you can do about it no right. really yeah nothing just like it takes months and months to heal it was actually later on it was easier to go with my backpack than without and uh -huh. Uh, the worst thing was um, trying to move during the night when you when you are asleep and you want to move from the one side to another. That was that was was pretty bad. But walking was okay actually. I bet your backpack was bracing your uh, rib in some way. Some people tape you use you know big surgical tape and try to make it like a brace. And I think your backpack could have done that. Yeah, I think so. I think that was the case. That's good. You're very tough. I, I don't think that most people knew that you had a broken rib. Well, you didn't even know that you uh, had I a broken rib. I, 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 yeah, I suppose that it could be broken, but I wasn't quite sure. But wow. when we were back, somebody told me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Next week, we'll get to see the challenging terrain that the rest of the group encountered on the way up to base camp. It was pretty, uh, pretty um, amazing, amazing views. And, you know, uh, some people have asked me, since this, this, this trip was in 2010, um, it's two years ago now, as I'm recording this, but people ask me, why did you stay be behind and not go up to base camp? And why didn't you go up to base camp? And... Luckily, I, I am very positive that uh, if I want to go back there sometime, I will. So I, I had the luxury of just knowing <laughs> the way my life had been in the last 10 years that, uh, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get back there someday. No big deal. But um, seeing the footage that, that the rest of the group took makes me realize that it's definitely someplace I want to return to. And uh, we'll get to share that start uh, that beautiful beautiful uh couple of days into what was it uh camp uh camp tico so, so yeah sugar camp sugar bowl, sugar bowl and then and camp tico. <laughs> where we yeah. buried the dead where we buried the dead <laughs> <laughs> but please stay tuned because it's it's amazing and yes they did have base camp all to themselves so thanks so much guys really appreciate uh, you joining me on these episodes thank you Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. We will Bye, guys. see you next week. Bye. Bye. The rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every day, and watching the show has become a part of many people's weekly routine. The show will always be free to download, but it's by no means free to produce. Please help me cover my costs by making a small monthly or one-time donation from the right sidebar on my website, and in return I'll give you some cool bonus materials. A donation of any amount will grant you access to some interesting video content, including high-definition versions of several podcast episodes, a one-time donation of $25 or more, or any of the monthly donation options will additionally grant you access to a downloadable version of the film Everest The Other Side, which episodes 1 to 61 are based on. I really cannot express how vital these donations are, and if you've made a donation, thank you so much. As always, our announcer is Marlon May, and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next week.
Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com.